Okay, so now we're just going to go through some of the definitions and descriptors related to vertices and edges. So the first one is a pretty straightforward one. It's the end vertices. So to have an edge, you have to have two vertices, right? Because an edge has to link to two objects in order for it to exist. It's a relationship between two objects. So the whole idea behind the end vertices is you have your edge. Your edge is UV in this case. And U and V are your end vertices. They are the where, or where the edge stops, and that is the end. Um, I don't want to use the word endpoint because endpoint has a different um, meaning in graph theory. But end vertices of the edge are your terminal vertices of the edge. Essentially, they are what makes up that edge. Okay, next up is adjacent vertices and edges. Now, the word adjacent you should be slightly familiar with from, you know, trig kind of a situation. It is going to be something that is next to it kind of a situational uh, idea. So, in regards to this, you would have the situation of if your vertice is connected to another vertice by some sort of relationship, it is adjacent to that vertice. So it's a direct relationship between that vertice and itself. So in this case, you'd have U and V are adjacent vertices in that example there because they have an edge between them. W and Z are adjacent vertices. But notice that W and V are not adjacent vertices. You know, Z and U are not adjacent vertices. Going to the second graph, the one just below it, you will have a situation of U and V are adjacent vertices, U and Z are adjacent vertices because they share an edge there, you know, and then W and Z are adjacent vertices. Now, edges are adjacent if they share a common vertex. So let's just rub that out for a second to go through it. So when it comes to edges, edges are adjacent if they share a common vertice. So unlike with vertices, there's a relationship between that vertice and the next one, and the relationship is very like solid, it's that line. For edges, they're just connected. So it's a case of uh, you are friends with someone. Let's just call them Bob, because that's the first name that came to my head. And Bob is friends with mark now in this situation you know the your relationship with bob is adjacent to mark's relationship with bob because bob is a common factor you know there is a connection there you know there is that that link so an edge is adjacent if they share a common vertice so let's go to the examples in the graphs so the first graph has no adjacent edges if you look there there is no situation where the edges are linked to each other by a common vertice. In the second graph, we do have an adjacent edge. So that's edge one, that's edge two, and that's edge three. Now we have U is shared, it's common for you know E2 and it's common for E1, so E1 is adjacent to E2. So they share a common vertice, they share U. There is also the situation where you know you have E3 and E2 and they share a common vertice and that is Z. So we have vertices adjacent if they share a connected edge and edges are adjacent if they share a common vertice. Okay, next up we have the definition of incident. And for edges, incident edges and adjacent edges, you know, the similarity is right there. Edges are incident if they share a common vertex. But incidence in relation to vertices is a slightly different definition. So a vertex is incident with an edge if the vertex is one of the end vertices of that edge. So in the situation or incidence, incidence is connecting you to the edges kind of a situation. So edges are incident if they share a common vertex, and a vertex is incident 
with an edge. So we don't discuss vertices being incident to each other. We discuss vertices being incident to an edge. Okay, so let's just go through that for an example. So edges are incident if they share a common vertex. So again, let's just go to that bottom graph because it's really helpful in this situation. So we have, you know, that UV edge is incident to the UZ edge because they share a common vertex. So UV and UZ are incident edges. Okay, next up, let's look for an example where a vertice is incident with an edge if the vertice is one of the end vertices of that edge. Now, this is basically just the case of, you know, you have this edge here, it's WZ. It's incident to Z. It's also incident to W. So Z is incident with edge WZ. Okay. So it's just if it's an endpoint, or well, not endpoint, end vertice of the edge, it is incident to that edge. Okay. So once again, if the vertice is an end vertice of that edge, it is incident to that edge. And edges are incident if they share a common vertex. So the definition for incident edges is the same as the definition for adjacent edges. Right, so next up we have a definition referred to as parallel or multiple edges. And this is just basically when you end up having two relationships between the same objects. So often when you're representing a system, it doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same kind of relationship the entire time. You could have, for example, you know, friendship. So we, let's, let's model a system of friendship. But we can also model, you know, family relationships at the same time. So you can have double relationship with someone just by based on sometimes you are friends, the family kind of a situation. So then you would have, okay, you have a friendship um, relationship and you have a family relationship that is two separate, you know, lines connecting you. So that is where the multiple or parallel edges come from. And in the example that we can see there, we have U and Z have an edge there and an edge there. And that is referred to as a parallel or multiple edge. You can have another one. We can add another one. We can literally, you know, add as many as we like kind of a situation. So you can have that situation where your relationships, there's a bunch of different kind of things that are, you know, being modeled in the system, which the graph is representing, to allow for a situation where there are parallel or multiple edges. Uh, a more concrete kind of example is just thinking about, you know, just in your brain for a second, think about your neighborhood and think about how you would map your neighborhood and the roads in the neighborhood. So if it was directed, you would have, you know, lines for, you know, the one direction of the road and then you'll have a line for another direction of the road but if it was undirected you just have two lines so there will be two ways you know to get anywhere from the different lanes of the road okay then we also have a thing called a loop so you can actually have a situation where you are connected to yourself in a kind of lame example you can be your own friend so you would have a relationship with yourself that is on a friendship level so a loop is basically that kind of a situation. Now, just be aware that in computer science and stuff like that, often they'll use the term self loop instead of a loop. And that's because a lot of people do get confused between a loop and a cycle. You will find out what a cycle is in a few weeks time, actually next week, probably, or the next session. OK, so an edge is basically a situation where it goes from its from one vert from like u the vertice u to the vertice u. So yeah, you have u, you leave u, you come back to u, and you refer to it as u u kind of a situation. So that is your edge, and that is a, a loop or self loop. Okay, so 
you may start noticing that the diagrams get a little bit confusing and things like that. And sometimes you just want kind of like the broad outline of, you know, what's happening in your graph. And one of the first things that you can start looking at for, you know, getting an idea of what your graph looks like without actually having the visual depiction of the graph is just the degrees of the vertex. So the degrees of the vertex is going to be telling you the number of edges with that particular vertex as the end vertex. And this is going to, you know, give you an idea of how much relationships that vertex has. Because remember, your edges are usually some sort of relationship and the relationships mean something. So it's like a density of the number of relationships and so on. So in regards to this, we're going to look at the degrees. There's different ways that we can write it. So let's just start off with the basic way. So we say the degree of the graph G for the vertice V. So when we talk about that, we have the degree representing, hey, it's the degree. Then we specify what graph it comes from. So that subscript is the graph it comes from. And then we specify what vertice we're looking at. So it could be vertice U, vertice V, W, or Z in this situation. If we know what the graph is, so it's not going to be ambiguous at all, so there's not like multiple graphs in the situation, we can drop out off the subscript G. So that is when, you know, we know what the graph is, what the graph is we're looking for, and there can be no confusion about it. And then you also have the situation where you can just use DV, so we've discussed that, DV, and again this is when the graph is very well known and the mathematical notation of the author, you know, it is well known that D is only going to represent the degree, but just be careful with that because, you know, D brackets, some letter, has other definitions associated with it in mathematics. So let's do just an example of working out the degrees of these vertices. So the easiest way for you to actually figure out the degrees is to just say, okay, here we have U, we have an edge coming there and an edge coming there. So the degree of U is equal to 2. Okay, let's look at W. W only has one edge coming, you know, connecting it. It's the end vertice of only one edge. So we have the degree of W is 1. Okay, so let's discuss the loop because the loop is a fun one because the whole idea behind this is the number of edges with the vertice V as the end vertex. So when you look at that and when you think about it, she's like, okay, there that edge has it as the end vertex, but technically it's also end vertice over there, and then you have that one that's coming in there. So in regards to this, the loop contributes 2 to the degree of the vertex. So the degree of u is equal to 3 in this case because it, ha it is the end vertice three times. Okay, so let's just write, say that again. Your degree of your vertice is the number of edges with the vertice v as the end vertex. So when you're thinking about the degree, you're going to be thinking about, you know, how many times is it the end vertice? And if you think about it like that, in that way of the definition, you will see that your loop in that case, you know, it's an end vertice there, it's end vertice for that, and it's end vertice for that one. So the loop itself counts two, and then obviously your normal edges will count one for every single one that, are, that there is. If we had to add another, you know, a parallel edge between u and z, then the degree of this will be bumped up one, and the degree we have that one won't be bumped up one. So you'll see, again, you'll count the number of times that vertice is an end vertice. Okay, now we know what degrees of the vertices are, we're going to define our new set of descriptors for the different vertices in terms of the degree. So the first one is a pendant vertex, and the pendant vertex is basically a vertex whose degree is 1. And the whole idea comes from the fact, like, you know, when you have a pendant, it's, you know, that kind of a, like a situation. So it's kind of giving you that shape. Obviously, you know for an edge to exist, it has to have another edge there. But when we refer to this, 
be saying that that one over there is a pended vertex. Let's just pretend that there is another one over there just to make things slightly more interesting. Okay, so it's that pendant shape. Then you have a pendant edge, and an edge that has a pendant vertice as an end vertex is a pendant edge. So again, in the situation over here, because that was a pendant vertex, that is a pendant edge. Right. Uh, next up is an isolated vertex. So an isolated vertex is just one that's chilling by itself. So it's going to be like a situation of, well, actually, I, I drew an example there, so I didn't have to draw that. W itself is an isolated vertex. It has a degree W is equal to zero. So that's an isolated vertex. If we look at this diagram at the bottom, the a pendant vertex in this situation is V. V is a pendant vertex. And Z is a pendant vertex. So remember the degree of V is equal to 1 and the degree of Z is equal to 1. Then you have the case of, you know, UV is a pendant edge and you have uz is a pendant edge because it's connected to a pendant vertex 